On this episode of Photo Kitchen, we're gonna learn to map out color and contrast using one adjustment layer inside of Adobe Photoshop. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 33 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're going to learn to map out colors using a tool inside of Adobe Photoshop called the Gradient Map or the Gradient Map Adjustment Layer. And it sounds very complicated, but here's the good news. This simple adjustment layer is going to allow you to color grade and apply contrast all inside of one adjustment layer with very little effort and actually very little knowledge to get great results. Now, if you're not familiar with color grading, color grading exists both in Adobe Lightroom Classic as well as Capture One. Now, Lightroom Classic has had it for just about two versions. Capture One's had it for a little bit longer. There's other programs out there, specifically video editing tools, that have had a color grade or color balance feature for many years, because this is actually a feature that was found in the cinema world for a lot longer than it was found in the still photography world. Still photographers have been applying color grading to their images using all sorts of tricks, but it's only recently that this tool has been introduced in our post-production workflow with very easy controls. It is ironic though that in Photoshop, there is no color grading adjustment layer. So you do have to know a little bit more about Photoshop to do this. But what you're gonna see in this video is that there is a lot that could be done with this that's actually probably more powerful and more user-friendly than the color grading panel in Lightroom Classic or even color balance inside of Capture One. So before we can begin, I'm gonna show you what this image looked like inside of Capture One. Uh, this is how I developed it. I did some retouching, but this is basically how my image looked like coming out of Capture One using the technologies in Capture One. And by the way, I've done something similar inside of Lightroom Classic. Both tools work really well. I think Capture One's a little bit better for color grading because you can put the color grading in its own uh, adjustment layer here as I've done, or just layer, not really an adjustment layer, but that gives you opacity control. So you could kind of turn that volume up or down and you can see the color grading that I've done here. And by the way, they don't call it color grading in Capture One, they call it color balance if you wish to use that tool. Um, and I'm just gonna turn off these different layers to show you what the image looks like coming out of Capture One. But this is not what it looked like coming out of camera. I did do some exposure changes, lifting shadows, adjusting the exposure, a little bit of brightness before coming into Photoshop, and I would have done the same thing inside of Lightroom. So if I hop back over into Photoshop, you could see here that I have this flat looking desaturated image already loaded. I've made the original layer a smart object and applied a neural filter to this. I really like working with smart objects. If you wanna know more about smart objects, I've done a video on this that I'll include a link to in the description of this video. And speaking of the description, while you're scrolling down there, uh, it would be great if you could hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. We love your support here at Photo Kitchen and also share this video and some of the other videos with your fellow photography friends so we can increase our viewership. Now back to the actual lesson. I have my smart object here and I'm actually gonna delete my two adjustment layers so we can start fresh. Now, I am going to say, if you stick around to the end of the video, not only am I gonna show you how to color grade inside of Photoshop using gradient maps, but I'll also show you how to do very powerful, very efficient and quick black and white conversions as well using the same tool. Now, if you're not familiar with gradient maps, you're not comfortable with Photoshop, the good news is, is this is not a real technical process. You're gonna be able to do a lot with a single adjustment layer. So let's start with creating that adjustment layer. I have my layers panel open. I have it all the way over on the left-hand side like a madman. I'm gonna come down to the bottom of the layers panel here and I'm gonna click the adjustment layer button and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and it is called gradient map. Do be aware that there is a gradient adjustment layer here. We're not working with that. We're working with a gradient map adjustment layer. It does use gradients, and if you're not familiar with creating gradients, you're in the right place. We're gonna talk about that. So I'm gonna click on gradient map here, and it's going to apply this adjustment layer. I get a new layer in my layers panel, and I have an icon to the left that'll control the actual gradient map, and then I have a thumbnail for layer masking. And here's the good news. This is probably one of the few videos that will do an adjustment layer tutorial without having you do any sort of masking. So we're not gonna worry about the masking here. But if you take note, my whole image has now become white inside this image. And that's because it's just automatically applying 
whatever my foreground background color combination is. So I'm just getting an overlay of color here. That's no problem. I'm going to double click on the actual icon for the gradient map. So that's the icon on the far left hand side. And this will bring up the properties panel, which in my case is over on the right hand side. It might pop up as a floating window for you. However, it pops up, you have the properties panel there. Now, the properties panel is giving you control over the gradient map itself. We're going to come down and you could actually see the gradient. Now, in my case, for whatever reason, it's pulling white uh, in the entire gradient here. So to change this, I'm going to click the arrow to the far right hand side. This will open up all the gradient presets, not only for gradient mapping, but just for all gradients inside of Photoshop. I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to click on basics and I'm just going to load a basic black to white gradient. And when I do that, all of a sudden my image will come back and you actually get a very nice black and white conversion. Now, again, the contrast of this image is not great. The lightness darkness values may be a little bit rough, but you could see immediately that something's happening to this image because of gradient mapping. And by choosing black to white, it's going to be a little bit easier to see what is actually happening with this technology. So now that I have the black and white gradient loaded, I'm just gonna click inside the properties window and I'm back to seeing the properties panel for the gradient map. Now we wanna edit this gradient. And the good news is this is kind of a universal way to edit all gradients in a lot of different programs. But if you're not new to editing gradients, there's a little bit of an overhead here, but we'll walk through it and make it as simple as possible. The first step is knowing that Adobe doesn't have an edit button. If you're looking for an edit button anywhere for a gradient, it doesn't appear. You have to know to click on the actual gradient itself. So I'll click anywhere on this black to white bar and this will open up the gradient editor. I think it's a terrible user interface. Adobe should have an edit button, but you just have to know to click on the gradient and this will load the gradient. Now, all of the presets that you saw previously are loaded at the top. We're not gonna work with those at the moment. We're gonna come down here to the bottom and we're gonna work with the gradient itself. Now the gradient is currently shown as a black to white gradient. And not only is this good for starting off for modifying a gradient, it's also a good way to visually see how a gradient is actually working in regards to mapping out information. If you look here, you will see there's a dark black going all the way to grays over to a bright white. Now this is exactly like how a histogram works if you've used the layers panel or the curves panel or your histogram on the back of your camera. So all of your dark information on the left hand side, your midtones are in the middle and your bright information is all the way on the right hand side. And currently black is being mapped to the darkest areas of the image and white is being mapped to the brightest areas of this image. We know this because of these little square boxes with pointers on top of them. These are color points for your actual gradient. So whatever colors are loaded here, that's what you're going to get mapped out. So let's just alter these colors. We're not really looking for a good aesthetics here at the moment. We're just going to double click on the black square. This will open up color picker. And it's a good idea to make sure that your color picker is set currently in the hue mode. Uh, it will work the same way. It's just going to match up visually. It's usually loaded this way, but sometimes people will look at gradients and they'll look like this. So just click on the radio button next to the letter H and you should have a color picker window that looks like mine. So the color picker has this bar that is the hue bar here. And if you're not really familiar with your color theory, hue, saturation, and brightness is what makes up a color. The way that hue works is that that's the difference between red and blue. That's a difference of hue. A difference of saturation is a difference, say, between a deep, deep fire engine red and then, say, a light pink or almost a bright white. A brightness value is the difference between, say, a pink and a dark red, right? So this, these three controls, H, S, and B, are hue, saturation, and brightness, and we're going to work with these a lot. But for the moment, I'm just going to come inside this window, and I'm just going to click anywhere uh, inside the middle of the box. This will give me kind of a middle value color. I get a, a hue uh, setting here of zero. I have a saturation of 55 and I have a brightness of 54%. And you'll see immediately now that I, instead of having a black to white, I kind of have a rosé to white uh, conversion here of the mapping of the color. Because what's happening now is this kind of medium pinkish color is being mapped to all the dark values. And if I move this color picker off just a little bit, you can see the gradient is being changed in real time. So instead of being pure black, it's now a medium kind of rosé pink color and it transitions over to white. If I click OK and then I come over here to white and I double click on it and I choose, say, a dark blue, I will get something really weird like this. Because now what I'm doing is not only am I mapping a color to my highlights, I'm mapping a dark color to the highlights. And this is an important thing to point out because when you're mapping colors, you're mapping them to a tonal value, a brightness, darkness value. So to remedy this, I'll just do, say, a light blue 
And now I have kind of a rose pinkish color going all the way over to kind of a light, very sky uh, blue here. So that is my current gradient map. Now, does it look good? Absolutely not. But you can start to see how this is going to impact your image. Now, if we wanted to do something a little bit more photorealistic, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our left-hand point here, or you can start with your right-hand point, to be honest with you, but I usually start with my dark colors. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna select a black value. I'm gonna go with pure black here. That looks pretty good, and I'll click OK. And now you have a black to white or black to light blue gradient. The next thing that I'm going to do is establish another point. I'm just gonna move my cursor underneath the gradient bar here and I have my little index finger icon and I'll just click and release and it's going to establish another point, another box. Now it usually takes the previous color. So it's taking pretty much pure black and it's now mapping it somewhere on the gradient. And this is a good introduction to the location panel down here at the bottom. The location is currently at 34%, or better way to think of it, at 34% brightness. So right now, at 34% brightness, we've introduced pure black. So it, tr it goes from 0% brightness to 34% brightness before it ever starts to transition to a lighter value. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna move this to the middle. You could actually click and drag if you wanted to, or just highlight location and type in a value. I'm gonna make this a true midtone, so I'm gonna do a value of 50%. So I'm gonna double click on this box to modify this. And I'm gonna get a little bit more serious about these numbers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, let's do kind of a purplish midtone here. I'm gonna click on the bar somewhere here and I'm gonna click anywhere inside the box and you'll see an application of purple going on. And if you look over at the gradient editor, I'm now transitioning from pure black and start to transition into purple. But because I put the purple in the middle, it's also started to brighten up the image. Now. As you're first learning this, a good piece of advice is that you wanna match your brightness number up to your location number. So in this case, my brightness is 78. It's a little bit brighter than it should be. So I'm mapping a purple color to what would normally be 50% brightness. And I'm also raising it a little bit more to 78% brightness. So I'm gonna just type in 50 here. And the image gets a little bit darker because I've mapped a 50% value of color in brightness to a 50% location on the gradient map. And by the way, you can play around with this and we'll see that in a second. But for the moment here, I'll set my saturation maybe to 80. And I'm gonna leave my hue at, in this case, 275. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I'm gonna come over to, say, my highlights and I'm gonna double click on this and I'm gonna make this a very bright yellow. Uh, let's do, just to do some round numbers here, let's do a hue of 50. Let's do a saturation of, say, 80. And let's do a brightness of 100%. Right, and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now what you see is the beginning of a gradient map that's starting to look like something you would do in color grading. I have cooler or darker colors for my dark areas. I have warmer tones for my bright areas. I am starting to map color, which establishes a motion, to my tonality here. And really, I'm kind of in the same ballpark that I would be inside of Lightroom Classic or Capture One. But there's a few additional tools that I have here. And before we do any more with the color gradient, I wanna show you those. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna establish this as my gradient for the moment. I'm gonna come back over to the Layers panel here. And first thing that you could do that you can't do in Lightroom Classic is I can lower the opacity of this. If you thought that you were just a little too strong with your color grading in Lightroom Classic, there's no ability at the time of this recording to change the opacity or the volume or the amount of color grading. You have to come in and do individual uh, saturation sliders here, which is fine, but if you just found that the whole thing was a little too much, you gotta go to each individual slider and reduce its value of saturation. But if I come over to Capture One, I do have opacity controls because I've done my color grading in an individual layer. So I can increase or decrease the value of this color grading and it just gives me more control. And it just makes it easier to do an overall edit. Fortunately in Photoshop, we've had layer control of adjustment layers forever. So this is built in, ready to go. But the one thing that neither Capture One nor Lightroom has is something called blending modes. Now you could go through the whole list of blending modes and you could start to see how this adjustment layer will blend in with colors underneath. And if you're brand new to adjustment layers, let me just put you in the area that you're probably gonna get the most amount of success in. And that's the middle area here, starting with overlay and ending up with hard mix. And just to make this a little bit easier to see, let's take our opacity back to 100. And then I'll come back into here and I'll start with overlay and then coming down to hard mix. 
Now, all of these blending modes increase the contrast in your image. Overlay is going to give you a fair amount of contrast, but soft light is a little bit less. It's actually a little bit more photorealistic as well. Hard light's just overlay times two, and then you start to get into some more surreal things with vivid, linear, pin, and hard mix. Now, again, if you're not familiar with blending modes and you're just trying to create a recipe here, because we're big fans of recipes in Photo Kitchen, just set your blending mode to soft light. That's probably where that you're going to get the most amount of success when using gradient maps. And if I set it to soft light here, look at the difference now. I'm now mapping the colors to tonal values, but I'm using the blending mode of soft light to also increase the contrast and give a more photorealistic result. Combine that with the opacity controls. Let's just drop this down to say 40, well, 50%. Let's land there at 50. There we go. I now have an increase in contrast and my color grading going on. That is a very powerful powerful feature because I've essentially done my contrast, my tonal value controls or tonal adjustments and established color to those tonal values all inside of one layer. But there's more to be done here. I'm going to take my opacity back to 100% and I'm going to take my blending mode back to normal just so I could see how this is going to apply. I like to overdo my adjustments and then use the technology of Photoshop to bring them back in. I'm going to come back to my properties panel here. I'm going to click on the gradient map and I'm going to add some more points because right now it's just a little too heavy handed. I go from black all the way to a midtone, then all the way to a highlight here. And I probably don't want black to be pure black, nor do I want my whites to be pure white. So I want to have a little bit more control over that. Uh, and you could do this in any order. That's the beauty of this. I'm going to establish two more points here. I'm going to click underneath the gradient bar and establish a point and it's going to pull off my last color for whatever reason. It's pulling white. That's no problem. So I set this to 25. So now it's 25% the value of brightness, which looks really weird in this case. And then I'll establish another point over here on the other side and set the location to 75. And it's doing white in both instances. By the way, if you establish points that you don't like, you could just click on the little square and drag it straight down and that will actually delete the point. So click under the bar to establish a point, click on a point that's already there to drag it off the bar. That is how you add or subtract points in just about any gradient from Adobe, by the way. So my location is at 75% here. I'm going to go back to the one that's at 25. I'm going to double click on it here and let's establish kind of a darker, but not so vivid, kind of more of a cyan kind of blue here. So I'll do, let's do a hue. Let's keep the numbers the same here. And it can be any number that you want to. I'll do a saturation of say, uh, let's do 80% again. And I'm, But I'm going to do my brightness at the same brightness value as the location. I'm matching these numbers up. So I'm going to do 25% here. I'll click OK. And then I'll come over to my other uh, newly created box. And let's do a value of orange. I think uh, 40 on my hue is about where I want to be. Saturation again at 80 We'll come back to that in a moment and I'll set my brightness here at 75. So immediately I have a better looking image. I have a different value of tonality. I've introduced more colors subtly in the shadows. I get a little bit more blues there. Now I do want to alter my beginning and ending points here, my far left and my far right. I'm going to double click on my far left point here. That's for 0%. Uh, brightness. It's at the location of zero. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the mapping of it. I'm going to take my brightness up, say maybe 7%, right? And I'll do my hue kind of in that same, I think I did 230, something like that, 235. Yeah, we'll just do 230 here. So 230 for that, and I'll do my saturation to introduce some color at 80% again, right? So now I've lifted the shadows just a little bit by increasing the value of that. So while the location is at zero where pure black should be, I've actually lifted that pure black a little bit by a value of 7%. So now my darkest areas will be remapped at a value of 7%. I'm going to do the same thing with my brightness here. I'm going to double click on it. And instead of having my, uh, I will leave my hue and my saturation 80%, but I'm going to take my brightness to say 94%. Right. And you could see how all of a sudden now I get more yellow in the clouds, right? It's not washing out as much. And I might just lift the saturation a little bit and go to say 60%. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'll click OK to accept the gradient editor. And now again, we could do soft light and then maybe a reduction of opacity, cool keyboard shortcut. If you hit the letter V, it will switch to the move tool. And then if I wanted this to be 40%, I just hit the number four on my keyboard. And there I go. If I wanted 60, I could hit six. And now I jump to 60%. And here's my before 
and here's my after. And now you can start to do the good and bad of gradient mapping. And that is you could spend a lot of time by coming in and clicking on these points and making fine adjustments. Now, I would say at the beginning, again, kind of keep your brightness values the same as your location values, but your saturation could change by removing the saturation, you're going to pull a little bit of color out of there. So if you didn't like how saturated the colors were here, maybe instead of a saturation of 80%, maybe sit, switch it to 40%, right? And now you're not going to get as many blues. It's not going to be as vivid, even with soft light turned on there. So uh, saturation is a great number to play with and obviously playing around and changing the colors uh, because you could map to anything. Traditionally, mapping is usually done cooler colors to shadows and warmer colors to highlights, but that is a guideline. It's certainly not a rule. So I will go ahead and click okay here. So this is a pretty good start for gradient mapping because not only have I been mapping colors using the gradient map, but I've also been controlling contrast by using the blending mode of soft light all inside of one adjustment layer. Very powerful. And once you get comfortable with it, actually pretty easy to use and very creative to use as well. Now for that last little bonus tip that I was talking about at the beginning of the video with black and white conversion. I'm gonna hide my gradient map here and then I'm just gonna create another one. Actually, I'll call this gradient map, I'll call this color grade, just to name our layers. And then I'll make another gradient map here. And again, it does an all white look. I'll just double click to make sure my pa properties panel is loaded. I'll come into here, my basics is already there. I'll go to black and white. And again, that's the beginning to a good black and white gradient. But there's a hidden feature inside of Photoshop and not a lot of people know about this. And it's actually been here for years, multiple versions of Photoshop. It's actually been here for so long that it's actually a hidden feature because it's kind of deemed to be an old legacy type of technology. Now to load this, what you need to do is go to window on your menu bar and make sure that you have the gradients panel open. It's weird that you have to do this through gradients, not a great user interface, Adobe. So for all of my secret Adobe engineer stalker subscribers, please take note of this, that you shouldn't have to go to the gradients panel to change something for gradient mapping, but you do. With the gradient panel open, what you want to do is click on the panel options button in the far right hand corner, right? If it's docked or an open window, it's still going to be in the upper right hand corner. And you want to make sure that you have or load legacy gradients. Now I already have the folder here loaded, but once you click on legacy gradients, you should see legacy gradients here. And that's it. That's all that you need to do with the gradient panel. You could go ahead and close it down uh, because it's done its job. Now I'm going to go back to my layers panel, double click on the icon. It will load up the properties panel. I'm going to click the little drop down arrow to go into presets. I'll collapse down basics and come all the way down to the bottom to legacy gradients and open that up. Now, all of these gradients in here still have a lot of good use if you want to play around with them, but where the magic happens is photographic toning. And if your gradient map doesn't look like mine, by the way, you could click this little gear icon and go to large list. It makes it a little bit easier to see because it uh, spells out what the gradients do. I'm going to come into here and I'm going to click on platinum. And look how the image immediately changes. Now, what I've done here is applied a preset of a platinum print, at least in Adobe's mind, what a platinum print would look like. And it's mapping the tonality and the subtle color to this particular image. And look at that black and white conversion. It's really nice looking. And if I click on the actual gradient itself, you'll see how they're accomplishing it. In this case, just two particular points. But you could double click on the points if you want to reverse engineer this. And you could see how they're mapping 0% on location to 3% brightness. So you could start to reverse engineer this. But uh, what I like to do is go a little bit deeper with this. I'm going to come in and let's do, uh, I think, gold one. There we go. And by the way, this is a good thing to kind of go through. You'll see a lot of traditional photographic darkroom processes here, and you could click through them and find the one that you like. So I'm going to say, let's do gold one here, right? Uh, nice. It warms everything up. It's an interesting look. But the one problem with this is, unlike when you're mapping colors, you don't have contrast control. I'll show you what I mean. If I come over to my blending modes and I start to go through the blending modes, what happens is it's blending the colors and the lightness values in. So you're not holding on to the color or at least the conversion of black and white with a gold treatment here. It's applying it. Now it's not necessarily bad. It does introduce some very interesting looks. For example, there's soft light. 
It's a very nice look here. Overlay maybe even a little bit warmer. And of course, you know, you have opacity modes to lessen that effect if you wanted to. But there's no way to increase contrast at the same time, unfortunately. So what I do here is I will just go ahead and introduce another adjustment layer. I'm going to go in and create a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure the curves adjustment layer is actually underneath the gradient map. And I'm going to rename this uh, gradient map photo tone. And I'll just call my curves here contrast. I am just going to work with the preset for my curves. I'll do a little bit more contrast than I need. Maybe medium contrast here. Uh, that's pretty good. Maybe even strong contrast just to increase the contrast. There we go. So I have a pretty heavy S curve. Uh, and again, because this is not an adjustment layer video, I'm not going to go super deep into curves, but a strong or medium is a good place to start. I'm also going to set my blending mode for curves. Good tip is to set them always to luminosity if you're doing contrast. That way they just change the luminance values here. And now what I could do is I could just come in and I could reduce my opacity of my contrast here. So I do have to have a second adjustment layer for this. But now look at these two. I'll just put these in a group by clicking the little folder icon here. And here's my before, here's my after. And the beauty of this is, is I could open up my group, double click on the photo tune, and then come into here and say, well, what does blue look like? You know, what does blue two look like? And I have a lot of great traditional photographic techniques hidden inside of Adobe Photoshop. I have efficient black and white conversions, not to mention all that color grading that we just did beforehand, all consolidated in a single adjustment layer. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. I know I did by making it. Please hit that like button if you haven't already done so and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're working with gradient maps already, did this shed any new information? Let me know in the comments. If you've never worked with gradient maps before, does this start to open up some new avenues for you when doing color grading or black and white conversions? I'd love to hear about your experiences after seeing this video and using these techniques. So until next time, this is MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.